What's up? It's your girl, DJ Narc. And we're back. So I'm home. I never get to be home. I'm smoking, so I never get to smoke at home while I do the podcast. So boom. We're definitely going to have a good time. Umber in New York is different from Umber anywhere else. And I think that speaks a lot to why my successful relationships are always New York based because the person that I am here is without any sort of what in Urdu is called melavat. There's no mixing there. The personality, the the energy is very clear. So, it's a good time to talk about something really, really important. The middle. The middle means a lot of things. What I mean when I talk about the middle is how far we go away from ourselves. How far from the middle towards someone else do we go when we like them? So you see that meme on Instagram on the quietest revolution where the guy and the girl standing on opposite ends of the seesaw depending on your sexual orientation or whether or not this is about a job or a degree or something substitute out please um and we see the guy and the girl at different times run too far towards the other one away from the middle and imbalance occurs right And it is through chance when a leaf falls or something, some chance object falls from the sky and they both run towards it that they are able to meet in the middle. And then the seesaw is balanced and they're able to love each other. So I saw that and I was like, wow, great. Someone made a 15 second meme that could have explained to me what the fuck I've been doing wrong. (laughs) For so long. (laughs) Great. Um, To which you could easily say, what the fuck do you mean? You've been married most of your fucking life. How, How have you been doing it wrong? True, true, true. Facts, facts, facts. But as we have discussed on multiple occasions now, uh, my first marriage and the circumstances surrounding it were just not in any way like romantic or it had nothing to do with that. It was based on, you know, like, what are people going to say? Just fucking marry the guy. It'll take five minutes. Uh, you know, go downtown, marry him. It'll take five minutes. And then if anyone asks us if our daughter's living in sin with a white guy, we'll just be able to say, no, she's, she's, uh, she's with a white guy, but at least she's married to him. Hey. Um, so because of that, um, I, you know, I resented the whole thing. Like, I don't know how else to put it. I was trying to find it. <laughs> in those Gemini pauses, <laughs> be really careful when a Gemini pauses, Cause it's like no 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 what are you thinking of <laughs> just say what just say it don't think about it we don't need you getting smart um, yeah I resented it man I resented it big time it actually came up at a family party the other day and I hadn't talked about it in so long um, I I, didn't, I talk about it so rarely that none of the people at the party knew the story that I told and I've known them for twenty years and they were like their jaws were on the floor like what that happened to you and I was like yeah man you know I'm not going to recount that here but one day one day um but yeah yeah I resented it I resented the whole thing you know I was just like 18 and wanted to just be like I don't know a kid um excuse me so I found a way to do that anyway. You know, I found a way to be married to someone that I didn't want to be married to and someone I really just wanted to, like, probably casually date, you know, if my parents or, like, the entire Pakistani Muslim community of the Upper West Side wasn't making it, like, what the fuck, just because I had a fucking conversation with a guy. Sorry, you hear my resentment, right? Um, So I found a way to be a teenager anyway. I found a way to be free anyway. And uh, I fell in love with someone, which, like, hadn't, you know, ever happened to me before. And I don't think it happened since. (laughs) So gross. Hold on, I'm going to drink some water.
<clears throat> so when it happened, um, I think I did a lot of running towards him, you know, because I was just like so relieved that all the stuff that I had grown up believing and hearing and like all the love songs and all the Bollywood movies and all that. I was just so relieved that that was actually true. You know what I mean? Because, like, (laughs) after the whole, like, debacle of, like, now I got to marry this guy? Why? Why? Why can't I just, like, fuck around with him a little and see if I like him? Like, come on, I'm 18 years old. Like, let me just, like, randomly date him a little bit and see if I like him. Randomly date in the fucking Box Lenny community? You got to be out of your fucking mind. So, when I, like, that, that had been so kind of traumatic, you know? Because you're raised with all this, like, like my parents, mashallah, mashallah, they're so in love with each other. They're crazy in love with each other. Like, oh my God, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So like I was raised seeing them being so in love, you know, and watching all these Bollywood movies and listening to all this fucking Bollywood music and shit. And even like the American music I listened to has always, you know, had that slant, super romantic So when this whole, like, debacle happened, I was like, oh, man, you know, rude awakening to what the world is really like. Like, wow, none of that stuff was real, you know? That stuff sure is just for the movies. And um, a couple of people, you know, friends of my brothers, like, that were around, took the opportunity to be like, ha ha, stupid kid, did you actually think any of that was real? You know, and I was like, um wow no I guess you're right wow you guys like listen to the same all all the same songs and watch all the same movies but like you don't actually believe that stuff huh and they were like no what are you stupid who actually believes that and I was like wow (laughs) you know welcome to the real world number like take the fucking glasses off you know um and uh and I did and I did because I was forced to you know and here comes the accept responsibility for your fucking actions part um I guess I guess I could have just been like you know what fuck it like I I don't want to do this at all like get the fuck out I guess I could have I didn't um so when I actually accepted it and was like I guess love like that just doesn't exist um it happened (laughs) <laughs> and I was like, whoa, whoa, wait, hold up. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense at all now. Like, I just, you know, resigned myself to the idea that those feelings are fantastical and aren't actually possible. Even though, like, in my head there was this voice going, no, but your parents feel that way about each other. Like, you've seen people in love. Stop. Like, people fall in love. But everyone around me was echoing the same narrative, you know, Um, you're just being young and naive. You're just being stupid. This guy loves you. He adores you. He like worships the ground you walk on. What's wrong with you? Like, why isn't that enough for you? Let me drink some water or like they call it that one fluoride bottled company in Jamaica calls it Wata. So when it happened... And it was just like the fucking movies. I was like, what the fuck is this now, yo? (laughs) Oh, but that didn't last long. That lasted like, you know, that sort of um, confused righteous indignation lasted for probably like three seconds. I got over that really fast and went straight to like, hi, hello. Are we getting married? Are we moving? Are we having kids? Like, what's good? Hey, wait. And by the way, what's your name? (laughs) Wait, and I already know you're a Scorpio, but (laughs) fuck with me. Not because I see the Scorpio tattoo on your arm. Fuck you. I just know. (laughs) Like it was all the things. It was all the things all at once. I swear to God, like you don't understand. Like you don't understand. I'm just going to set it up for you. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yo, I'm drinking the water, bro. I'm doing the work. Okay. Don't at me. Let me tell you. Let me set this up for (laughs) y'all. Okay. So I was like particularly savage that day. I was working in the stock market, securities trading, having a fabulous time. 
I was living on a in a triplex on the Upper East Side by myself, actually, uh, because I, yeah, I, I, um, I decided that I didn't like. I thought that my husband should go to L.A. and he had been working out there off and on and doing stuff in like soap operas and all kinds of stuff. So I was like, maybe you should go out there for a little bit and just like try shit out. And uh, I think he had just like returned. Which I was, like, again, like, annoyed by. You know what I mean? Because it's just like, ugh, this, like, what's going on? Please just go away. <laughs> like, I never wanted to do this. How did I get stuck with this? And and everybody hates when I say stuff, like, because they're like, no, he's such a nice person. And it's so true. Like, he's just, like, the best. He's so nice. <laughs> he's so nice. No, it's so true. He's so nice. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um... I was having a particularly savage day. Okay, let me continue the setup. So across the street from this, like, and it was, like, this triplex that was, like, um, it was set up like a dollhouse, right? It was super fucking dope, actually. So you, like, walked in. Shout out to anyone who was at that one fucking party where we had someone work in the door and the DJ in the little kitchenette alcove. Yeah. <laughs> For everyone who's listening that was at that fucking party and was waiting in line outside and fucking hanging off the fucking fire escape. Yeah. Bring it back. Bring it back to 87th Street. Yeah. Um, so there's a place across the street, right across the street, where I used to get my nails done and they were fantastic. And then there was a place right around the corner on First Avenue um, where I used to get my hair done and they did it perfect and they were in a Veda salon. So I was like hooked up, right? So I loved, I loved it there. And I was away, you know, <laughs> as you may be aware, I live um, with all my family members, like all in the same building. So I was actually dumb hyped to be on the Upper East away from everybody, dumb hyped. And you know, I was young, I was making money. Like I was just dumb hyped. Like I just like, yay. Like, and that's why I was like, oh, you want me to marry this guy? Yeah, okay. And then I moved to the Upper East Side and... I was like, maybe you should go to L.A. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's so, it sounds so funny, you know, when you, like, recount it because it just sounds so calculated. But I swear it was not like that. It was not like that. It was not like that. I just, it just happened to be like that. It'd be like that study show. <laughs> study show would be like that sometimes, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, so he had, like, gone and then, like, had come back, you know, and was like, no, I want to be here. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, are you sure? Um, and I was, like, tr- I was, like, contemplating whether I should, like, I don't know, whether I should tell him to go back again or not. I was just contemplating, you know. And uh, my parents were transitioning into this, like, uh, move back, move back to the building and stop living over there kind of thing going on. So there was a lot going on. And I decided that the best thing that I could do was to go downtown to this, like, little Parisian boutique that used to be on West Broadway pre-9-11. And they had stuff for curvy, uh, but like skinny women. I guess that's the way to put it. Because it's not petite women. It's like, you know, like, like just slim, but you have like boobs and an ass. I don't know. Like curves. So I really like their stuff because usually when I would find stuff that would fit me in certain places, it'd be too short. You know, or it would be too small in, like, the bust area or something. Always too small in the ass area. You know what I'm saying? So I was just, like, psyched to find this place. And I would just go down there a lot. And uh, my job was such that I needed, like, a range of clothing. Which, like, I actually kind of miss. It's funny. Like, back then I had, like, obviously, like, super dope other kind of clothes. But I also had this whole other, like, corporate wardrobe that was super dope. Which I kind of loved because I was killing that fucking game. Um, anyway, so on that particular day, I had gone down there and bought like lots of things and I took my scalps, <laughs> you know, I took my game, my hunted game and I decided that I would stop by my parents' house because I knew they were out of town. They were in Pakistan and I knew the house was empty 
and I just wanted to pop over and grab a little food out of the fridge actually (laughs) and just like sit down for a second and like eat something you know um and I walked into what I thought was an empty house and there was a stranger um lying on the carpet uh in a wife beater uh (laughs) and uh he was playing video games he was playing a video game um and uh I was like I I I didn't know well I dropped the bags (laughs) let's start there I dropped the bags um I bugged out for a second. Like, I tried to do the whole, like, oh, my God, there's an intruder in the house thing. But it's really hard to do when the person that, like, looks up at you is, like, 6'1 and tatted and, like, fine as fuck. And you're like, there's an intruder. (laughs) Help. (laughs) Wait, why are you playing video games? Who are you? What are you doing here? (laughs) What happened? (laughs) Like... Okay, God, thank you, but how? (laughs) Like, talk about manifestation. What the fuck is going on? And then he explained, you know, who he was and went in, and it all made sense. And I was like, oh, my God, no, no way, really? Oh, okay, which I'm not going to go into here. But um, when that happened, you know, that particular day, the reason I had felt so savage and had gone downtown to buy all the things, to do all the shopping things, uh, was because uh, I was feeling really trapped by my life and really trapped by the notion that had been kind of, you know, uh, forcibly <clears throat> put on me that I should resign myself to a life without real love. You know, the kind of love that's like not based on any sort of reason. You have no explanation whatsoever. You 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 can't put any words to it even. It's just a thing. It's just a thing and it happens and you're like, ah, okay the thing happened you know the thing happened like the first time you see the ocean you're like oh okay that happened Uh, if you were like old when you saw the ocean like some people see the ocean when they're babies anyway it doesn't matter um so when it happened I uh, so I'd been walking around all day actually thinking about how sad it was that there was all this art and poetry and music and film based on this ethereal concept of real love, you know, this higher Steve Winwood type of love. Um, and how sad it was that that was just all fantasy and that was a world, art was a world that we were creating to somehow placate ourselves and, and, and mollify this kind of void of existence into meaning something for a little while. Because if that kind of love isn't real, then you know, we're obviously making it up just so we don't go crazy, you know, because like, what the fuck? What's it all worth then if that's not real? You know what I'm saying? So I was just having some dark philosophical thoughts and, you know, yeah, yeah. Erring more on the side of, you know, the macabre about what does it all mean then? And what's the purpose anyway? And, um, of course, after like, so what they would do with this particular store downtown is that they would like take a rack and just put a bunch of stuff aside for me when it first came in because they knew they had like grown accustomed to knowing what I liked. So it was perfect. Um, and I had just kind of annihilated that shopping trip because I was really like racked by, I don't know, I was having like an existential crisis, you know, like if if not love, then what? <clears throat> And here was this person that had come back from L.A. And did I really want him back in my house? And, oh, geez. And, you know, like, I hadn't seen anybody or done anything since he'd been gone. I just, like, like the idea of not having to be beholden to someone that I didn't even really know. You know? Like, I don't know. I was just trying to be normal. And, <clears throat> excuse me. Let me drink some more water. And piecing it all together trying to piece it all together, trying to make some sense of it, trying not to get depressed, walking around swinging these shopping bags. And yet somehow left that store feeling great because the stuff I tried on fit so well. You know, one of the wonderful things about working uh, in the market and being a trader was just that 
you could wear anything because you couldn't keep any weight on because it was so stressful. (laughs) That's not healthy. I'm not laughing out of like joy. Um, But it made shopping fun. Um, So I had like crushed the shopping trip. Everything looked amazing. Even the dumb shit looked good, you know. And so I was like, I'm going to buy it all. And uh, there I was swinging my shopping bags on a bit of a, you know, manufactured high. So I wouldn't have to deal with the the <laughs> the thoughts I was having. And you know, a turn of the key, I walked down a hallway and then like everything I had just been thinking about went Arr! Okay, we'll go. I was like, yeah, get the fuck out of here cuz this right here like what? <laughs> Hello. Wait. Wait. <laughs> like are you lost? <laughs> How'd you get here? <laughs> Did you fly here? Did you appear here? What's going on? Um, and like I'm just I'm I'm quick, you know. I'm a quick study. I knew right away. I mean, I'm, of course he knew right away too. But like men are weird. Um, men know and then go, oh fuck, what the fuck? <laughs> Where women are like, yay. Uh, so yeah, that happened. Um, and when that happened. And probably for the reasons I've just explained and taken 20 minutes to set up that scene. Um, When it happened, I ran towards it, you know, of course, with both arms open, like, because I was just trying to convince myself it didn't exist. And then it happened. And I was like, oh, thank God, I knew this was real. (laughs) And then every time I saw him after that, it was like, oh, my God, this is more than real. This is crazy real. (laughs) Like, what the fuck is this? Um, This is like what it must feel like to be on Saturn or be in space. I said that once. This is what it must feel like to be in space. Yeah. Anyway, so... (laughs) Yeah. So, I think because of all that, it made it really hard for me to understand what it meant to not run too far to the other side of the seesaw, like in the meme, you know? Um, I'm the girl with the hearts in her eyes and she just got both arms like out and she's running like that's me like (laughs) but wait I love you hold on like (laughs) what's up what's going on um and I just have never gotten you know excuse me Venus and Aries I've never gotten that there's another way I've never understood, like, how could there be another way? What could be better than someone just completely being in love with you? You know, just, like, head over heels. It never ends. Like, just, like, I'm in love with you. That's it. That's all there is. And and for a long time, I was so hard-headed that I did the Aries thing of just running into that wall, you know, because I'm like, I got horns, I can do this all day, motherfucker, you know, and just running into a brick wall, running into a brick wall, running into a brick wall. And the universe was like, go ahead, you can run your head into this brick wall all you want, but this ain't the move, and you're going to learn it. You can do this for a whole lifetime if you want to, come back and try it again next time, you know, but you're going to learn. Um and I just, it was so counterintuitive for me, man. It's just so hard. Like, how do, how do you not run, like, just with as fast as you can towards the thing that you love? Like, th- that doesn't make sense to me to do anything else. Like, like all their pictures, blow their phone up, bro. Like, <laughs> like do all the things. Why, why isn't that the move? Why isn't that the way? Well, <clears throat> now we get into it. Hold on, water, and then I'm going to light this. Now we get into it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the middle. Ooh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I'm sick of the... What is it? The sweatsuits and the corny hats. Let's talk about it. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, hold on. Yo, I'm drinking the water. There's like a lot of people have been saying like because of the Machine Gun Kelly post that like, oh, obviously you like guys that are like covered in tattoos. No, no. 
I don't generalize like that. I like uh, one single person, the one I told you about that was playing video games, the stranger <laughs> who happens to be covered in tattoos. If he like happened to have like one huge tattoo and that was the only tattoo he had, then I would be super into that. You know what I'm saying? It's so subjective with me. Like I'm not this person who like every guy with tattoos walks by. I'm like, ooh, I could give a fuck. I'm just not like that. <clears throat> I like a person and then anything that that person's like about, I'm like, that's the move because <laughs> he's so hot like that's the move <laughs> except i will say that i fuck with maseratis before he fuck with maseratis i will just i just want to say that i just want to say that because i've been about that life anyway <laughs> so the middle let's talk about the middle because it's found it's taken me a really fucking long time to find it because that story i just told you is from 2000 bro 99, 99, 2000. What? That's what I said. You heard me. You heard me. It's taking a long fucking time to find the middle, bro. And there have been moments, you know, I do it my way. I do the whole, like, run at you with both arms open, like, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. <clears throat> and he does it in his way. You know, that's the Gemini way. That's the Gemini Cancer way. Even the Virgo way. Virgo females be like that. And he do it the Scorpio way. You know, disappear for years on end, then show up out of nowhere, then I leave you alone, then show up in the middle of the night, then disappear. Like, man. Every time you show up more successful, than the, like, just, <laughs> will you just, like, it's been, it's been, a, it's been, you know, running this way, like, and then running this way, just like the, just like the meme. Just like the graphic. And so here we are. So if you find yourself not being able to maintain the middle or you find yourself unable to pull someone else towards the middle and either they wait, they want you a lot and you don't want them or you want them a lot and they don't want you or maybe you both want each other and you just can't seem to get the timing right. <clears throat> what do you do? How do you find the middle? Hmm? You know what I realized? I don't think that you can do anything. I think that what I did wrong, if there is a wrong, you know, um, is to not trust it more. That's the only thing that I should have done better is just to chill. Like, I knew then what I know now. I knew 18 years ago that that feeling wasn't going nowhere. It never would. Like, that's that you know that's just what that is everybody knows that feeling when they have it when they're like damn (laughs) it's you hi (laughs) and I should have just relaxed into that and trusted that because that's a force you know that's a thing and that's what I like about that graphic is that thing that falls from the sky is the most important part of it you know, love finds its own way, just like we talked about in the Eclipse Concrete podcast about how <clears throat> life finds a way. <clears throat> okay, all right, we'll take another water break. Listen, we're going to get hydrated. I don't, And I also don't talk a lot when I'm by myself. And most of the time I'm by myself. So I think, like, after, like, 10 minutes or like 7 to 10 minutes my voice starts to get scratchy because I'm just not used to talking that much anyway um, love finds a way like life finds a way and I think it's important for us to explore that right like so love is a law like gravity's a law like what do I mean so gravity's a law as in my emotions don't change what gravity does or doesn't like if I go to the top of this building god forbid and jump down I'm gonna fall it doesn't matter how I feel about gravity it doesn't matter how I feel about the building or about falling in general or if I have some greater philosophical idea of what it means to fall you know <laughs> whatever it is it won't matter because what supersedes all of that are the construct of this simulation, right? Of the con- are the constructs of this hologram, and one of them is that gravity is a law, right? I am the law. 
Shout out anyone who got that Demolition Man reference. Anyway, so like gravity is a law, love is a law. What do I mean? I mean, just like if you go to the top of a building and you jump off, you're going to fall down. Same way, love happens when it's supposed to happen. These rom-coms and all these romantic comedies, all this bullshit that Hollywood puts out makes you feel like there's like this weird effort and weird checklist you got to fit for love to happen to you. And it's like this thing that you do and you go out there and you like find and you strive and you do all this stuff for. And it's just not true. That's just not how it works. And any great love story proves that. Any great love story is based on one thing, if you ask me, and that's fate. No matter how much these two people want to be together or don't want to be together, it just keeps happening, right? <laughs> like, <clears throat> wouldn't have gone on for as long as it has if fate wouldn't, you know, wouldn't keep crossing it. If fate wouldn't keep making it happen, it wouldn't keep happening, you know? And fate and the whole idea of, you know, fated lovers and all of that that all speaks to this larger concept of love being a law. Now, what do I mean? So if gravity means things fall down, love as a law means that when you're supposed to fall in love, you will. No matter how good enough you are for it or not good enough you are for it or thin enough or big enough or thick enough or pretty enough or ugly enough or tall enough or blonde enough or brown enough it doesn't matter or shiny enough or glittery enough or none of those things actually will matter because when you're supposed to you will with the person you're supposed to with and that's just what it is when you go out there and you try to search for something that's already written for you you're searching something that's trying to find you you're searching for something that's trying to find you you ever do that in great adventure we're like <clears throat> why when you go to great adventure you set up that meeting point why when you get to six flags great adventure do you tell people if you get lost come to the fountain why does everybody do that <clears throat> you know why because the last thing you want especially pre-cell phone days is for you to be looking for somebody and somebody's looking for you because it's, you know what happens when that happens. It's so fucking annoying. And sometimes you know it. You'll be like, this motherfucker's looking for me. I could tell because I don't see him nowhere, which means he's on the move. If he was standing still anywhere in this park, I would have seen him by now. He is not. He is on the move. Because <laughs> that thing is desperately trying to find you. You know? And... <laughs> it's funny right it's funny so in the same way the reason you pick the fountain is because if somebody gets lost if something happens if you notice one of your party is missing whatever whatever you go to the fountain that person will be standing there they're not around looking for a big group of people and you're not around you know going around a bunch of big group of people now split up into smaller groups of people looking for one person who's looking for all of you you see how confusing it can get so What's our fountain? What's our meeting point to facilitate love finding a way and love being the wonderful law that it is? Well, I think your fountain has to be your place of peace. You see, did you notice how I, how I, you know, I emphasize the shopping it seemed like a weird thing to do, right? Because it's like, how is this in any way, like, even... But it was a vibe. I was in my... I, I could tell that my vibe was, like, going off, off, off because of the thoughts that I was having. And I went and did something that I know resets me, puts me in a great mood, and, you know, overall just lifts my spirits. I was in my place of peace as... <laughs> <clears throat> materialistic as that may sound I had been shopping and I had had a great time and I bought some stuff that looked great on me and I was about it you know I was all about it so that fountain where we want the person who's lost to come and meet us where we want that thing that's looking for us to find us 
we, we have to be the person who's lost. We have to be the person that makes it to the fountain and waits there. Because that person, they're, wait, they're on their way to you. That faded thing is on its way to you. That love is coming to you. The middle you reach is making it to that meeting point. That's the middle. And then you have to do the hard job, which everyone has had to do at some point when they've gotten lost, (laughs) which is wait. You got to wait until the people come and find you. And if you become impatient and you leave the fountain, if you've ever done that, you'll often hear people say to you, that's so funny. You like walked away and like two minutes later we showed up. Why didn't you just wait? We told you we're going to meet here. Why didn't you just wait? That was the plan. That's what we agreed on when we first came here. What the fuck is the point of picking a fucking meeting spot if you're not going to fucking wait at the meeting spot? <clears throat> you can tell we've had this conversation in my family before. And of course, that person is like, I just got tired of waiting. And every Aries is going, yeah, exactly. They got tired of waiting because they were waiting forever. And like, maybe you guys didn't even realize they're lost or whatever. And everyone in the family is like, no, you're just impatient. (laughs) The plan is to wait. We will meet you here. So in the same way, when you're talking about love, when you're talking about anyone who may not be putting in as much effort as you are putting in, anyone who you would really like to be with, but you feel like when you make too much of an effort, it messes things up. You know, when she runs too much towards him, he almost falls off the seesaw. You know, it's that balance that's illustrated there. How do you achieve that? Um, and, And that is about energy. It is about your attraction quotient. It is about how much you give and how much you keep. How do we achieve that golden, you know, sweet spot there? where we are giving enough of ourselves but really anyone has a choice they could take it or leave it you know you give people their freedom to like you or not and I think that's important because a lot of times we want to force people to like us I mean I'm guilty of it everyone's done it like we feel like if you fucked with me or if you used to like me you should still like me or you know or if I like you there's also that if I like you you should like me you know there's all kinds of like weird things like that that we do but the cool thing about meeting somebody in the middle and waiting at the fountain and letting love find you is that anyone who shows up is there completely of their free will you haven't had to convince them of anything you haven't had to in any way um bargain with them or something so so they're doing something that they really 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 want to be doing you didn't guilt trip them into it you didn't cajole them into it you didn't negotiate your way in they showed up because they were looking for you that's the cool thing about the middle it's not about not making an effort it's not about being cool and aloof and making the guy chase you or it's not about any of that nonsense it's just about giving people the free will and the space to either fuck with you or not fuck with you and the cool thing about that is that if somebody loves you if they really love you they won't realize it themselves that they're wandering around looking for you but they are and they'll find you because because you're tied to them if they love you and you love them they're on a string and no matter which direction they walk they're just heading right towards you that's the cool thing about the middle you don't have to run towards anything that belongs to you why why you why are you struggling why are you struggling running towards something that's that's like on its way to you that belongs to you that has your name on it that's like walking towards you You know, that's what made me finally calm down. I mean, just, it was really hard not to be first completely infatuated just because of the way he looked. And then, you know, not ever having dealt with a Scorpio like that. Like, you know, this guy my parents made me, he was like a Scorpio Sag cusp and super saggy that way and like friendly and sweet and like all these things. And, you know, this guy was like, this guy is not he's just he's he's just like a scorpio um and i had never you know i i was really young and i had never dealt with anyone that intense and you know 
and I just it was really hard not to be infatuated it was really hard to not fall in love immediately it was really hard to like stay away in any way you know it was like next to impossible like there was nothing I could do I would just like you know <laughs> like love sick you know um and I think my reaction to that was just like run just run just go get it just 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 keep at it just go after it like you know like you know it it's real you feel it just and and I never realized why that wasn't okay and now I get it running around looking for somebody who's looking for you like sit the fuck still please what are you doing don't you trust this don't you trust that there's a string between the two of you why are you running around tangling it up with everything and now it's going to take x amount of time longer to untangle all that like yeah the thread is still there but now you got it tangled around six rides or something you know so fucking annoying and maybe then that string never gets detangled off all the stuff that you've been running around getting it into but even then if you just go and sit still it will find you again and that's become harder and harder to do when we have social media and email and we can stalk people and we can do all this stuff and we can reach people on so many different platforms it's really hard to just sit at the fountain right because now if we apply that analogy to now we could say well I don't need to wait at the fountain because I have a fucking cell phone I'll just call you and be like yo where the fuck are you guys and I'm sure this happens at Six Flags every day someone takes out a phone several times a day okay <laughs> several someone several times a day someone takes out a phone at an amusement park and calls their family or their friends and says yo where the fuck did you guys go and then they say oh we're here so now we can just proactively go find them and meet back up with them right but so so the so the way to then translate that to our analogy would be now you can use all these different technologies to reach out to that person and 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 bring them you know more into your life well no because all those technologies are just another way of reaching past the middle like that's what you have to understand all those things have energetic output liking people's photos going on their page texting them doing all this stuff like you're exerting more energy than the middle ground whenever you exert more energy than the middle ground you're not giving love its dignity and that other person their dignity to find their way to you and make that choice for themselves you see, because then if they engage with you, respond to you, are they doing it out of pity? Are they doing it out of obligation? Are they doing it because they're just like, oh my God, she's liked so many of my photos, I should say something by now. Like, you know, it's the quality of the response and the quality of who comes to you and meets you in the middle that matters, right? So you want that person to be there completely of their own volition. And reaching out to them on any platform or doing anything like that just isn't productive it's not helpful right because that's the supposition you have to go off of if somebody is in love with you that's like very specifically what we're talking about if someone is in love with you and if you're like nobody's in love with me there's still somebody out there who you are fated to fall in love with okay so it still applies that person cannot help coming to you they just need you to be still enough to be found and they also need you to be vibrating at the same frequency they're vibrating at so y'all can still gel just because you're in love doesn't mean you're on the same frequency don't get it twisted you can be on completely different frequencies and still fucking love the shit out of each other and want to fuck all the time and be around each other all the time and all the things and still be way off in terms of fucking frequency and it's a nightmare so you have to like evolve to the level of being worthy of that person. So by the time that person shows up and is like, oh, here you are. I'm glad you stood still long enough for me to find you. When they roll up on you at the fountain, let me put it this way. You got lost. You go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. Fix your hair. Look at yourself. Fix your outfit. Get cute. Go get some water. Hydrate. Maybe get an ice cream. I don't know. Then go and wait. Wait. 
Oh, there's people around. Talk to them. Whatever. Hang out. Oh, there's stuff going on. Oh, look, a little parade's passing by. Nice. By the time you're doing all that, looking cute, doing your thing, the person who's looking for you, like, comes and finds you. And it's like, oh, my God. And when they roll up on you, they're like, yums. Yums. Look at you. Oh, yeah. Well, I was waiting for you. Duh. Well, I'm all the way here. Let's go on this fantastic ride over here. Okay, fine. Sure. You see, you don't get that honest, like, I want to be around you for no reason other than, like, I want to be around you. You don't get that when you meet people past the middle. You don't get that when you make an, too much of an effort. You don't get that when you're the one always doing all the work. It seems like that will help you, but it just won't. It's so counterintuitive, I know, because we're such givers, but it will not help you. It will not help you get the person or the job or the thing or the approval or the friendships, the popularity, whatever it is that you're looking for, the success, you won't get it that way. Because that's the thing. It's, this doesn't apply just to like love. Love is a law. Luck is a law. All these things, they operate in basically the same way. They find you and you have to be still enough and worthy enough to be found by them. So one way is, you know, the analogy we use is go to the bathroom, check yourself, make sure you're like looking good, feeling good, go eat something. So what do I mean by all that? What are all the self-care things that we should be doing as we wait in powerful, receptive energy for all the good things that we know and we believe we're worthy of us that are coming to us? You know, it has to do with hygiene, it has to do with aesthetic, it has to do with grace, it has to do with posture, it has to do with day-to-day beauty, day-to-day grace and living. What is your living, what is, what are your living conditions? What do they look like? How can they be improved? I'm not talking about spending money. I'm talking about organization. I'm talking about cleanliness. I'm talking, you know, right now I'm working on the author's note for the book, I couldn't do it until everything in the house was perfect. I just, I cannot write unless everything in the house is put away and perfect and done. I can't. My environment has to be organized and clean and just put away. Everything, you know, I like it sparse. Same. If you want that good luck and that fortune and that love and that person and that advancement to find you... You have to do certain things to assure that when they show up, you're even visible to them. You know, because people could show up to the fountain to find you and not see you. Because you're sitting there crouched in a ball crying. I'm serious. I know that stings. That's why I said it. (laughs) Welcome to what the fuck is like to be my friend. I'm sorry, I didn't, I, but I'm serious. I know it's things. That's why I said it. When that person shows up that's fated to find you, what the fuck happens if they find you crawled up, rolled into a ball? Yeah, they still want to be there, but that's how you want to meet someone in the middle? Because what's going to happen then? That person is gonna, isn't going to be able to have an equal relationship with you. They're just going to end up taking care of you. And that's icky. This whole like weird parental child thing we got going on with our partners where we want people to be our dads and our moms and stuff. That shit is icky. Stop it. Stop it. We're grown fucking people. We don't need people to be our parents. We we should be grown enough to be parents to people already. We don't need to be still pretending that someone is your daddy or someone is your mom. Like this is not the move, you guys. This is not the move. You know? Like... Excuse me. It's just, it's not, um, it's not cute. Like, I get that, like, I can run my fingers through your hair in a certain way because I've had a kid and you'll, like, love it. You know, I get that. I get that there's, like, an element to, like, like, moms are sexy and dads are sexy. And I get it. I get it. But, like, we, we go too far with this, you know? You don't want someone who has to, like, pick you up and pick up your broken pieces and put you together and then, and then you're grateful for them to, for, like, forming you back into a person and then you have a relationship with them and it's kind of based on, like, gratitude but also some weird form of humiliation now because they've, you've been seen at your worst. I don't know. It's weird. Let's not do this. 
you don't need to be found at the fountain crawled in a ball. Why are you crawled in a ball crying? Why are you like rolled up in a ball crying anyway? Why? Because you got lost and you're waiting at the fountain? Wait, be patient. Stop being a baby. <clears throat> I'm serious. You're going to end up in that weird house in the lost and found. You know that weird house where they take the kids? Where, when you get lost at Great Adventure at Disneyland, they take you to the weird house? You don't want to go in the weird house. I've been in the weird house. That house is weird. <laughs> I asked them if I could wait outside, and they were like, why? And I was like, because it's weird in here. <laughs> I've been mad woke. Um, you don't want to go in the house. You don't want to get taken in there. What you need to do is not be rolled up in a ball crying just because you're waiting at the fountain. You got shit to do. There's other things that you can do while you're waiting in power, powerful receptivity for things to find you, for love to find you, for luck to find you. There are other things that one can be doing. You can be getting better as a person. You could be improving and improving and improving and hitting spirals, upward spirals that can't even be imagined in thought and action and feeling and art and creativity. You, you could be really, you know, living it up to the point where like when the person shows up at the fountain looking for you, um, the whole park is also shown up because you're like having a party at the fountain and everyone around the fountain is like just hanging out with you and having the best time. So, I mean, it's not just that person that shows up looking for you or that job or that opportunity. It's like that times a thousand because now you've got everyone's attention because you were just waiting. And while you were waiting, you were having such a good fucking time. You know, maybe you made friends with the other people around you that were waiting. Maybe you uh, realized that it was really fun to jump in the fountain, actually, and do what the little kids do and play around in there. Whatever you do in that waiting space, as long as it's grateful and happy and fun and productive and nice, you'll have a great time. And it'll just up the quotient of what you get when it finally gets to you, you know? Either way, you got to wait. Either way, things come to you when they're supposed to. There's no such thing as going out there and getting it. There really isn't. That's a that's a myth. Things come to you because they're supposed to. Now, how ready you are to receive that thing, that's another story. You know, if I want to work with someone and their personal life has fallen fucking apart, I'm not going to work with them. I would love to work with them. The opportunity was presented to them. It was written in their luck for that opportunity to be there for them, but they weren't up to snuff in, in terms of their life. And so they were not able to avail that opportunity. That's what I mean. There's all these things that are going to come at you. And if you are spiraling up and being the best you, when that opportunity shows up, be it love or money or whatever it is that you want most, contentment, I don't know. It'll look right at you and it'll know you're ready. It'll be, it'll be able to hand over all that abundance to you because it knows that your arms and your back are strong enough to carry it. The universe is not sadistic. It's not going to give you more good stuff than you can carry out. <laughs> you get that, right? It's only going to give you as much as you can handle carrying. What does that say about the amount of good stuff you have right now? It means that that's all you can carry right now. What do you need to put down so you can carry better stuff? What are you carrying that's taking up room in your arms that you can put down so the universe can give you some more abundance? Where are you running around in circles when you should be standing at the fountain? You tell me. You tell me. I can't even begin to tell you how I feel. Because I know. Because now I know. I just get it. I know. Can't do nothing about it. If somebody loves you and you love that, there's nothing you could do. This world is so small. There's nothing you could do. If you love someone and they love you, they're not going nowhere. But, like I said, how much room do you have in your arms? Because they may not be going anywhere. You may be waiting on them, but there's a lot of other things that are coming in the meantime too. How much space do you have in your head? If you don't get them, does any of the rest of it matter? That's silly if it doesn't. You should be just as concerned about how much money you're making as you are about how much love you have in your life. One is no more important than the other. You have to f support the family and the friends and the love, loved ones around you, right? 
just as concerning. That's what I'm saying. How much space do you have? Are you sitting there crawling the ball crying because the love of your life hasn't shown up yet? And the money that was supposed to show up and the success just walk right by you because it can't even see you? You see what I'm saying? And and would the love of your life want you to be missing out on opportunities like that? Or would you would you think you're a bum for doing that? You see what I'm saying? We got to be worthy of these things, peoples. You see what I'm saying? So, love. Love is waiting at the fountain. Love is the middle. Let people meet you there. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah, no, it's not the most, like, go get them type of advice that's supposed to make you go make a big mistake and text someone you shouldn't who makes you, then makes you feel like an idiot for doing it. No. Wait. Learn the power of it. And learn the wonder of self-improvement in the meantime. And then just see how good it feels when things start rolling in just right to you. I mean, right to you, fam. Right there in your living room. Mm. Lord. (laughs) I'm glad it was in my parents' living room. It might have been somewhere else. I might have fainted in the street. Like, what in the world (laughs) was that? (laughs) You see what I'm saying? You got to wait. And that waiting has to become your happy place. Because if you really do believe that love is everything. And love is stronger than everything. Then if two people love each other, what's going to happen? If you really believe that love is stronger than everything. Then you would just relax. Because if it's stronger than everything. And you got it. Like a disease. Just relax. Because you got it. You got the strongest thing in the world beating in your chest right now. Whether it's reciprocated or not is a whole different question. That's not the point. If love is the answer, then of course it will be reciprocated. If it's love, it's love. That's what I want to leave you with. If it's love, it's love. If they love you, they'll come back. If you love them, hold on to it. It's all you can really do. You know what I mean? But don't mistake any of these other things floating around out here for love. That's why you have to wait at the fountain. Because if it's love, they'll come back. And if it's not, they won't. And if they just come by the fountain and beat the shit out of you and leave again, we also know that's not love, right? We don't need to go into that. We'll do that in the next podcast. (laughs) I think I have to make a video on Vimeo about the psychocybernetics because I just don't see how I'm going to be able to fit it into an hour. That went by fast, right? I love you guys. You know this. The podcasts are all the fire. The author's note is out tonight. Of course, I'm being like super perfectionist about it. It's driving me crazy. You know, every word. Oh my God. But it'll be out tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And... We'll we'll talk more about this. We're not quite done with this either. It's a nice change from the political stuff we've been talking about. Probably getting more political again next week, but also got all the Libra stuff coming out. So looking forward to that. Libra season coming up. You see how well this ties into Libra season coming up, right? What we've just been talking about. I'm glad. I'm glad. And if you don't see how it ties in, we can talk about that next week (laughs) if you're like wait a minute no I don't get it smoke some more go back and listen to it from the beginning (laughs) I love you guys um shout out to the revolution shout out to the revolution that hits me up on the street shout out to all of you who want to like just hang out and talk in the dms all the people that bought the book, all the people that are on the list for the author's note that goes out tonight, we're about to go on a fantastic journey. I'm so excited. I cannot believe it. Dave Chappelle was looking at the arc crystals um, the other night at the Emmy suite. Like this whole arc thing, man, it's taken off. Nassim Harame and all that. I told y'all. I told y'all. It's all in the book, man. It's all in the book. It's going to be fucking dope. I cannot wait. But, uh... Yep, that's tonight. And this is this. (laughs) 
It's your girl, <laughs> TJ Nark. I'll see you next week. <laughs>